iPods have become very popular these days and everyone wants to upload videos and music to the iPod and enjoy it on the go. So in this tutorial, we'll show you how to do that. We've broken this tutorial down into three parts. In the first part, we'll create a small video file for the iPod using Video Studio. In part two, we'll show you the synchronization features of iTunes. And in part three, we'll upload the video into a video iPod and watch the video. As you may know, the iPod has evolved over the years and you'll need a fifth generation video iPod and not just the regular iPod to watch the video. So let's get started. We've already prepared a Video Studio project for this tutorial. It's called the iPod Test Project. The project is a video montage of some action clips which will look very nice on the video iPod. So to create the final video, let's go to the share step. Now since the iPod is a mobile device, we'll choose the export to mobile device option. And then we'll choose this option, MPEG-4 iPod 320 by 240 with 30 frames per second. We're choosing this option since we live in North America which follows the NTSC standard. NTSC's frame rate is 30 frames per second. The other reason for choosing this option is that our source file is also encoded at 30 frames per second. It is very important to select the correct video frames per second that correspond exactly to your input source file. If you happen to live in an area, for example Europe, which uses PAL, and your input source file is encoded at 25 frames per second, then select this 25 frames per second option. We'll select the 30 frames per second option. Let's give our output file a name. Let's call it the iPod Test Project. Now click on Settings. Video Studio is going to create an output file in the My Documents, My Videos and Clips folder because that is specified as the export file path over here. Now click on OK and OK again. Now as you can see, the video file is being rendered. Just want to mention that the iPod does support the QuickTime movie format but we recommend that you stick with the MPEG-4 format since it's a newer codec and in our experience yields better results. As soon as the file is created, it gets added to the library over here. Let's take a look at its properties. So we created an MPEG-4 file with a resolution of 320 by 240 for the video iPod. 320 is the width and 240 is the height. So you're working with a really small frame size, but as you will see later on, that despite the small screen, the video will look spectacular. MPEG-4, by the way, is part of the H.264 Advanced Video Coding Standard, which is noted for achieving very high data compression. Now let's see where our file got created. So we're now in the My Documents, My Videos and Clips folder, and here is our file. It's a small file around 2.4 megs. Now that we have our file, Let's move on to part two. So we are now in iTunes version 7.0.2. Now let's go to the movie section and import the iPod movie that we just created. So from the file menu, go to import now we'll select our clip and click open. And as you can see, here is our iPod test project video file. It now shows up in iTunes. So now that we have our file in iTunes, 
let's move on to part 3, the final part, and synchronize this file to our iPod. Now in earlier versions of iTunes, all the iPod synchronization options were accessed by going to Edit and then selecting the Preferences menu. But as you can see now, the iPod Sync options are no longer here. The new way of synchronizing content to your iPod is very cool. Let's go ahead and connect our iPod to the computer using the USB cable. As soon as the iPod is detected by iTunes, the iPod shows up here as an additional menu choice. My iPod is called Neil's iPod and all my music and movies saved on my iPod are displayed here. The coolest features of this new version of iTunes are all these new tabs that show up here which can be used to update your iPod. You can synchronize your music, podcasts and movies all from this one convenient place. So let's go to the Movies tab. Currently, iTunes is set to update all the movies from the computer to the iPod, but we don't really want to do this because it could take a long time. So we'll set it to sync only the selected movies and select the iPod test project. Selecting this option will move only the selected clip or clips to the iPod. Let's click Apply and we're all done. So as you can see here, the iPod update is in progress. iTunes is now uploading the iPod test project video that we created earlier. The transfer is really fast since we're moving a small file. That's it! The iPod update is complete. Now let's play our video on the iPod. Let's go to the video section, then movies, and play our video. As you can see, this is a high quality video mainly due to MPEG-4, which is a fast and high quality video codec. Now, before we close, one final recommendation. Always use large fonts like we have. The rule of thumb for the iPod is keep the font simple. So for example, the sans serif fonts like Arial are a safe choice. The bigger the font, the better. So there you are. You now have great entertainment and training on the go. Wish you the best in trying this out on your own. And we hope that you're enjoying the video series so far.